Hello, and welcome to Episode 2 of Wandering Spirits of the Pacific Northwest. This is Martina, and I'm here with my partner in paranormal crime, James. Hello. While you might think exploring the spirit world is serious business, and we do too, in today's episode, we're delving into the lighter side of the unknown to travel to the beautiful Oregon coast to explore with the help of an article published by BeachConnection.net five of the goofiest legends to ever make it into our local lore. And with that, I'll toss it to James, who's going to tell you all about the Seal Rock Sea Monster. Ah, yes, the Seal Rock Sea Monster. Well, this one has kind of been lost to time, and nobody really seems to talk about it anymore. But back in the mid-1930s, even the local newspaper was in on the spreading of this local legend. Like I said, in the mid-30s, talk began in the local community of one or more sea monsters flopping around near seal rocks, where the seals hang out and flop around. <clears throat> A small newspaper called the Wakina Bay News ran with the headline, quote, Sea Monster Reported Seen at Seal Rocks, end quote. And that was on June 15th of 1935. Now, the newspaper described them as great, slithering serpents just offshore. The first was seen when uh, locals heard some unusual bellowing from the sea lions and went out to investigate. The paper describes them as 40 to 60 feet long and dark brown, like a seal, with a head about three feet wide, unlike a seal. <laughs> <laughs> it played in the surf for about a half hour and then it wandered south. The newspaper claims a second ambled by, but it was much more quiet. The Historical Society believes the tale, of course, was invented to create a stir for tourism, as the claimants were all vacationers that were living there temporarily. Now, <clears throat> Martina, have you seen the Seal Rock Sea Monster? I have not, but hmm. I have questions. <laughs> yeah. Like, why did he, why did they suddenly just show up? Yeah. It sounds like maybe they're following the migratory patterns of the gray whale. Oh. Um, so, yeah. I yeah. I feel like. They're probably 30 to 40 feet long, yeah? Yeah, the gray probably. whale, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, what's up with the flopping around? <laughs> I'm and concerned for the sea monster. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Does he have some kind of bone disease? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Don't let your children out in the surf, parents. The sea monster's there. Okay, Martina, tell us about the Haystack Rock. All right. So I love this one in particular because it feels so <laughs> planned out. And it's the legend that Cannon Beach's Haystack Rock is man made. And we uh -huh. all know that people tell tall tales. And one that was going around Cannon Beach back around the year 2000, but or was resurrected, I should say, around the year 2000, mm -hmm. but probably dates back even to the 70s or before, was that one of tourists' favorite spots to go take pictures and wander around, which is this local geological feature, Haystack Rock, was man-made. And my favorite part of it is really the commitment of the locals to this story. <laughs> <laughs> there were artists who actually created whimsical drawings that you wow. can find in books that show the rock with wooden scaffolding <laughs> <laughs> around it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then like bits of, you know, outer rock layer over, <clears throat> over that, which is amusing, but obviously not true, but... There's just that part of me that loves the commitment of <laughs> yeah. like making something up that's like kind of yeah. stupid uh -huh. and then taking it to the nth degree yeah. by providing pictorial yeah. evidence mm -hmm. of it. And I just, I love that. There's something about that that just speaks to my heart. It reminds me of when I was in, I think I was like in eighth or ninth grade, but I had my whole algebra class convinced that because I was German that I wasn't allowed to wear western clothes <laughs> and that we had polka nights at my house <laughs> and that when i'd get home from school that my parents would pull the furniture out of the way and my oh, dad would Lord. play the accordion oh, why was i never invited <laughs> i didn't know you then oh, okay 
But anyway, yeah, polka <laughs> nights and that I had to wear, that I was required to wear a dirndl dress and that I packed American clothes <laughs> in my backpack and changed before and after school so my parents wouldn't know that I'd adopted this Western lifestyle, <laughs> which is so stupid because, I mean, Germany is not exactly yeah. some outpost. To yeah, the... yeah, podunk third world. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, this kind of thing with the haystack rock being man-made just speaks to my spirit <laughs> in a very special way. The whole time you're talking about that, I'm thinking, okay, how do you hide the bulldozers? that are piling up the rock because obviously it can't be done by hand i guess what's inside the rock is there a man in a white suit that's bald petting his cat i like that asking for one billion dollars like the beach version of an island <laughs> yeah. well i mean an island is beach but yeah, yeah. but like the northwest beach version of yeah. having an island layer yeah yeah I, I i love it i love it i think that's great uh, okay, so lots of people have heard about this one. Um, this is, is is still talked about to this day, and we're going to go here on one of our little adventures, and we're going to check this out for ourselves. I can't wait. Yeah, me either. So there is a sordid tale um, of drunken irresponsibility and an accident where a very ill lighthouse keeper fell to his death by rolling down the spiral staircase at the light, lighthouse uh, at Yakina Head in Newport, Oregon. Um, so this resulted in rumors of the man's ghost, um, a keeper by the name of Higgins haunting that upper area of the lighthouse. And this isn't one of your huge lighthouses. It's a smaller, smaller one. So, but this all began with Higgins getting very ill one night and he wasn't able to perform his duties. So, meanwhile... His partner had gotten rip-roaring, hammered, stinking drunk, and was passed out cold. So when a beacon emergency happened, apparently it blew out or something, I don't really know how they work, uh, Higgins, poor Higgins, who was barely able to move, was forced to climb the 100 or so steps and check on the lamp. Now Higgins was so out of it, he fell and he was killed. Now after the accident, the guilt literally ate up the other lighthouse keeper who refused to go up there without his dog for fear of running into the otherworldly Higgins. And the ghost tale lasts for decades. In fact, it's still going on today. Now, interestingly enough, the story was debunked in the late 90s, so they say. And... It was debunked when the Bureau of Land Management, which runs the lighthouse, received a letter from a relative of Higgins saying he left the lighthouse to go work on the docks in Portland, and he died of natural causes in his 30s. So, yeah, I'm happy that Higgins had a better ending than rolling down the lighthouse uh -huh. stairs, which <laughs> lighthouses, by the way, just make me think we could do a whole lighthouse tour because oh, yeah. I know... Well, we have many of them on mm -hmm. the coast here, and I know there are stories associated with, if not all, many yeah. or most of them. Yeah. But the thing that's kind of making me laugh, <laughs> when I think about Higgins and his partner, I keep thinking about like some spirit going up behind people and whispering, <laughs> the rain in Spain stays mainly on the plane. <laughs> What makes the story better than having it be Higgins the lighthouse keeper? Than yeah, having it be the ghost of Henry Higgins. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I just love the name Higgins. Me too, yeah. Mr. Higgins. Excellent, excellent. Martina, what's Bandage Man? Oh. This is freaking me out. So Bandage Man, I am so excited. I got Bandage Man in our random uh, drawing drawing of who was going to talk about what. Because I've known about Bandage Man since I was in my 20s, which because I'm old as dirt was a really long time ago. <laughs> and so Bandage Man is, you can think of him as Oregon's own low rent mummy. And ah. he's this guy who supposedly haunts Highway 101 near Cannon Beach. And the stories are all a little bit different. Um, but kind of the crux of the legend is that there's this guy who was very badly injured, some say in a sawmill, mm. and wrapped up in gauze and bandages. 
as he was being transported to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the 1940s or maybe even earlier. Hmm. And sometimes the story says it's a rainy night and the ambulance lost control. Sometimes the ambulance gets into a crash. But however it happens, poor bandage man never makes it to the hospital. Oh, no. Because everyone in the ambulance dies except for... Well, maybe he's already dead. I don't know. Bandage. The point is, Bandage Man <laughs> disappears. What? And so now he lurks in the trees, oh. and as cars go by, he scares people. If you're extra lucky and are driving a pickup truck, they say he'll jump on the back of it, right. and that he has apparently nearly frightened several drivers to death in doing so. Um, but he also supposedly terrorizes cabins in the woods and a nearby tavern but of course only on mm -hmm. rainy nights with yeah. lightning because well that makes sense you go back to what you know right yeah and why not you use your tools yeah right yeah right you use uh you use what you got man so i find this i've heard of this as well and this is also one of my favorites and one reason it's one of my favorites is i used to work on an ambulance i used to be a paramedic number one we shut the door okay Number two. <laughs> what? Wait, you shut the door? <laughs> yeah. Make sure they're they're shut and they actually lock from the outside. Um, but anyway, anyway, this is in the 40s. And back then it was the old Cadillac ambulance, you right. know, and you had the one big door. Anyway, uh, you no, know, this is good. I, I uh, this is one of my favorites, too. And um, people I, now I've heard I've heard three different things. I've heard it, the ambulance crashed. Yeah. A landslide hit the ambulance. Right. Yeah, I've seen that, too. And when it crashed, the stretcher actually came shooting out of the back of the ambulance and rolled down the road. That is the first version I heard. And I yeah. like that one because it's dramatic. I mean, yeah. And wouldn't you, ch anyways, I don't know. Wouldn't you chase after poor Bandage Man? No, well, they died. Yeah, they died. Oh, that's right. Bandage Man. There's nobody to chase after him. <sighs> so just be careful when you're driving. Don't, uh, don't hit Bandage Man again. He's been through enough. He has been through a lot, and one of the things I remember <laughs> when I was still in my early 20s and super mature that I, I had a couple friends I used to take beach trips with was we would hypothesize about whether Bandage Man knew Sasquatch because they're both oh, yeah. out in the woods. To, you know, maybe yeah, their paths yeah. have crossed, maybe they're friends, maybe they know each other. Who knows, really? Who, yeah, absolutely. That I, that that makes complete sense to me. Yes, I think so. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anyways. We said it would be silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next on the news. <laughs> um, so, uh, apparently, okay, we're going to start talking about the government and secret facilities in the Coast Range. So, since the 70s, the Van Duzer Corridor, um, it was a beautiful drive if you've ever been through there. Beautiful drive. Uh, anyways, it's right outside of Lincoln City, Oregon, and it has been the source of odd paranormal rumors about UFOs. Now, people report being controlled by some other entity while driving. Jim Beam. Scott, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the legend goes that there's a secret facility akin to Area 51 in the woods of the Van Duzer Corridor. Now, I've heard this for a few years, too. Now... When research started um, looking into this in the late 90s, um, a really startling array of just wacky stories popped up. So some Lincoln City locals reported strange lights, people appearing and then disappearing along that stretch of the tight, windy curves, and it is very tight and windy in there. Now, one Salem girl even said she stopped at the rest stop in the middle of the night and encountered a group of middle-aged men dressed as ninjas <laughs> <clears throat> and they were using the rest stop too because ninjas gotta go Even potty ninjas gotta pee. yeah you got you know i mean geez now a pair of hikers from seattle they claim to have bumped into a secret government facility which actually jives with some of the rumors from the lincoln city locals so all this led to rumors of an x-files-esque black site and strange experiments with physics but many believe the talk of the government facility. Um, there was actually some kind of testing complex belonging to the state authorities 
that sits near Cascade Head, and that is actually a, a small facility. And they, um, it was probably being used uh, for some biological and wildlife sciences. It is closed off to the public, um, and it is kind of hidden, so it's a little bit of a mysterious facility, but it is there. Um, now, there is also a rumor um, along with this that there is a tiny little ghost town lurking along one of the trails near Rose Lodge. It's really just a collection of a few buildings. And this, along with the actual secret government radar base, now it's a radar base, um, that existed for a while on Mount Hebo, could have also fueled these Area 51 legends. That makes sense. But you yeah. know whether it's any of this is true or not, you had me at forest ninjas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yeah, I think the, yeah, and they're middle-aged men. God bless them. <laughs> You know, you can be in your 30s. What is middle age now? 40, 50? Jumping around like ninjas? Right. Yeah. I'll take some of their supplements. I would say so. Yeah. Why not? Hey, everybody. This has been uh, Wandering Spirits of the Pacific Northwest. Thank you for joining us. You can find us on Facebook. You can email us your experiences and your legends or what have you heard about Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. There's got to be a ton of legends out there. Uh, you can email us at uh, Northwest. What's our email address, Martina? <laughs> I'm stuck on the ninjas. I can't get yeah, off the ninjas. It's North. See? <laughs> okay. It might be Northwest Ghost Podcast, Outside of our but... window is a light flashing in the sky, and it has <laughs> taken both of our brains. <laughs> our email address <laughs> is northwestghostpodcast at gmail.com. Now I'm going to go get some snacks for the aliens and we'll be back later. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye.